here goes not <laughs> here goes nothing <laughs> That's why I'm not Chet Atkins. <laughs> uh, so hard to play, especially on live occasion. But anyway, I play it better not on stream, obviously. Well, I'm here today to celebrate 20,000 subscribers and so thank you and to celebrate that I actually went out to talk about Nora McNoffler's song for for one time and I actually bought a new microphone so it's thanks to you and again Thanks to your support and because of my viewers, I can actually continue doing that. And that's a pretty good microphone and it eliminates all the echo and stuff. And I, I hope you hear me well. So the arrangement I'm going to talk about today is this great and great and great arrangement of the Stars and Stripes Forever, which is this classic American tune. And it's a really insane arrangement and really hard thing to do and thing to play. And so that arrangement actually 
dates back to, to the 70s actually and it was done by a guitar player and teacher Guy Van, Dus Van Duser, Guy Van Duser and it's also an American guitar player and arranger and on Berkeley music website there is a cool story about how he ca came up with this arrangement, how he handed it to Chet to record and it's actually a pretty great story and the funniest thing is that it was actually originally intended to be like a joke or almost like a joke and so I think the idea was to show people how you can arrange something as difficult as this ridiculous, ridiculously hard march into something playable on the guitar but Chad Atkins actually made it incredibly well so he tweaked the arrangement a little bit because he learned it by ear and so he made quite a lot of changes and that's what my version what I'm playing is reflects and so Chad, At Chad Atkins actually added an element of joke in the arrangement because he ends it with a you know is the end well it is and he just ends like this abruptly and everybody is laughing and having fun so Chad Atkins took this arrangement and made it into the perfection because everything the, what that went in, that goes in this arrangement is really perfect including the the ending but of course you don't need to play it like that I mean and like this but anyway I'm I'm working without any scripts here or anything else and just I what I want to do is just to go through the whole arrangement and I actually written it down and to download it you can download it through, through the link in the description it's both tablature like online tablature and guitar profile so but more than that I'm gonna actually cast it to the screen here so you have you have a better idea because in the end of the day tablature doesn't mean anything if it has no explanation and so without an explanation it's just like I just learned this lick the other day, which went like something like... Without explanation, on paper it looks like a bunch of notes thrown together like this. And when you actually try to learn it, it, it makes no sense at all. And in the Stars, Stars and Stripes Forever, this is incredibly important to have an explanation because there are many places in that arrangement that just absolutely baffling and some places where it can actually take you a million of times to figure out but anyway so this is it the March temp watch um, March time signature of 2-4 so it's like pum 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 with an accent on the every first beat so that yeah, the banjo roll is pretty, pretty good. It's actually taken from a song, The Price, by Joe Robinson, which is this great fingerstyle player. Like this. amazing stuff and the, the, the song is great by the way I recommend you to check it out so 
stars and stripes forever. It starts pretty simple with the this this octaves. And great thing is, is this rhythm. And keep attention on this bass line. this and the melody st starts here this is the first in the song in arrangement there are essentially three major parts which is this E major part and then the this A major part and then this piccolo part playing two melodies at once and that's all the parts and so this is this is the E major part which starts simply enough on the E major chord but actually teaching people I found that this particular grip is, is pretty hard for people to play and so what it is is the C major shape brought up here and with a little bar mini bar here with the index finger and it starts here and Here's the tricky bit, and there will be a lot of these tricky bits here. The tricky bit is, is that for four bars or so, you need to hold this bar here. So it goes like to this G7, G sharp 7. And the rhythm is on the strings 3 and 2. And I'm holding the bar all 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 that all that time. Including this F sharp minor. Everything holding this bar here. Because then it goes into this thing. This, this shape actually reminds me of this E flat minus 7 shape. It's classic jazz shape, which is mute 6, 4, 6, 7. But the tricky bit here is that the ring finger actually goes one string higher on the second string, holding it at the same time with the little finger. And this finger is keeping this bar here. And the trickiest part here is that then it goes into this hammer on and pull off the, the little finger, which is the weakest finger. And it makes it especially hard. But then it also, the G sharp here on the first string, I actually press it down with this part of the index finger. And so it, it goes like this. Incredibly hard to play. And then this shape goes down in tenths, this. this B flat or B B major and on the second part of this B major I change the position to this to four to the fourth position in context it sounds like amazing amazing 
amazing stuff. Yeah, of course I recommend Mustang Micro because it's a no-brainer. It's a $100 amplifier that just sounds ridiculously nice and has a lot of built-in effects and a lot of built-in amplifiers. That's a no-brainer. For $100, it's the best purchase ever. And so... And by the way, yeah, I'm here to celebrate 20,000 subscribers, which is a pretty healthy number, I, I must say, especially for a non-musician. You already check out in the beginning how badly I played this piece, but it's not about getting it perfect. It's all about just enjoying it and having fun. And especially, I'm, I'm just having fun playing it at home. I just go home and... And just go through it and it's, it's, it's very enjoyable to play. And don't be afraid of arrangements like this and songs like this. It's, it's, even if it feels too hard to play, eventually you'll get there if you put enough effort in it. And so, with that said, what goes next? So, E major. And here, from this part, the bar continues with this, which is really a continuation of this E major shape. Only the melody now is on the first string. This, from this position here, it goes down to this four, 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 seven. this this interesting shape actually which is this F minor 7 e which it actually sh is showing on it on the screen here um, to this great G sharp 7 with D sharp on on in the bass I love that part because that's basically two melodies at once again bass together sounds great and this again a challenging part and every part here is challenging and especially this is like because that's actually a very challenging challenging part and all it is is really is through the next uh, few bars it goes through E major like this. Basically, bass and fingers play this. Which is E7, this E7 in the seventh position. And melody is with this huge stretch from 7th fret to the 12th fret. The, the hand ends up being like this. And on the bigger guitars, that's a, an incredibly huge stretch. So, so big. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty straight melody. 
and this rhythm. Then I release my hand and play this part of the melody just with one finger, like this, and to this B chord. Then this great idea of playing open string, fretted string. Love that. Then it repeats a little bit. But this time it ends on a single note here on the eighth fret going to so to F sharp 7 with C sharp in the bass this is F sharp 7 this is F sharp 7 with C sharp in the bass self-explanatory and it repeats and I'll play the whole thing now slowly the whole first bit um, <laughs> second time From this point, actually, the whole arrangement is, you know, whole march is so, is so greatly written and so finely arranged that actually you can practice it just playing it over and over again. Just keeping, 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 getting back to the first beat. But if you want to continue, it actually continues with this. So it goes to this. And right away, this melody mm, on the 10th fret, this is the little finger playing the melody here, and it goes, it leads into this E major position, which is incredibly hard to grip as, as, as always, as everything in this arrangement. It's, a, it's just such a such a hard thing to play, and I think Chad Atkins actually never recorded it in the studio because every time you play it, you make so, so many mistakes. It's unbelievable, actually. And even if you if you even if you listen to Chad Atkins and his recordings, he actually made so many mistakes as well all over the place. And <laughs> I think that's why he never recorded it, because that's, I think that, that arrangement, that arrangement um, is meant to be played live and be enjoyed live in that weird, um, because, uh, because it's so hard to play. But anyway, uh, I mentioned this E major. Now this, this is pretty ridiculous because 
here actually this imager gets played across the whole fretboard. So it's seven fret here, three nine frets here, and then here it continues with the bass on the seventh fret and melody on the ninth fret. And so this is this ridiculous shape here going from this A major. It's just pretty hard to play, I must say, but with enough practice it's possible. Then, but then it releases to this, back to B7, so... So any, anything possible with, with practice, so practice more. This is my advice for a day. Um, Then goes a bunch of octaves, but this is not an octave, it's like 7th fret to 11th fret. Bass, octave, bass, octave. And a bunch of other octaves here as well. But keep attention here, because any little mistake just throws you away completely from this thing. And you actually end up on this shape. Which is actually... Again, B7, but in this full shape here. So. Going to the simplest, probably the simplest part of the whole arrangement. It's E major and two double stops here. A and the melody goes higher and higher and the tricky bit here is that then it goes to this diminished one so See what I did there? I'm actually blocking the bass here, so I play like this. Ooh. Because it's huge E bass here, I'm blocking it here before playing the A. And actually, when I switch to this D diminished or A sharp diminished, I also block the bass here. So slowly it will be something like. I'm doing it because to get this clarity going because if I'm not muting or everything it just it just it's like hitting a piano with the sustained pedal it just goes everywhere and by this I I can achieve this clarity and that's the goal here then it goes to just repeats basically through this. Through B7 again. E again. But, but 
this time it actually goes to this A minus 7. So the first time it, it was like this. And that this time it goes through this A minus 6. This is basically same thing as this one, which is the diminished one, diminished chord. So this whole shape gets one fret lower, but the melody stays the same. And this is actually again one of the hardest places because it's a huge stretch. reasonably easy to play E major triads. To this B7 shape. But only the these three three notes here, but I'm actually holding the whole bar here because then it goes to the melody continues in the bass. That's why I'm holding it right away here. And also the melody continues on the first string here, open E, and played at the same time with the bass. So and when played fast it's, it's Sounds beautiful, but I, I now I play the whole thing, the second part slowly. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. faster you see mistakes everywhere in this arrangement but it's beautiful and I just realized if you want to be cool, I can actually play it. Here I can go through this. Cherakins never play like this, but it, it is possible to go here, no, 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 here, here. Instead of this E note. To go chromatically to this. This, this is the weird part, it actually, in the this bar, it's not B7 with B in the bass, but it's more like B7 with this 9th fret bass. And that's... And 
and that's really important. Is, this is the, basically the easiest part in the whole arrangement because this is actually just a, your simple boom chick style melody. Pretty straightforward, especially compared to all the ridiculous stuff that went before. But all it is is essentially, is, as I said, this. Simple finger picking melody, but with some twists. So, for instance, here in the bar 41, what happens is while playing this. It is pretty hard to play, but all it is is alternating thumb and index finger. So. But what makes it hard is that if you start it with the thumb, it goes thumb index, then thumb, and then index on the sixth string. So you have this strange thing when you play bass here with the thumb, and then it's like cross strings and you're holding like your right hand like this and then play thumb here but you can actually get used to it and you can get used to a lot of things in this arrangement so it's not even the hardest part but while I play this I'm actually replacing this shape here uh, uh, to this bar with index finger thing. So take a look. And my hand is ready for the next beat, which is this one. Which is this part, so melody. part is pretty hard to play this because it's again it's a huge stretch here melody goes here it's basically your typical rec time sound I guess so typical Scott Joplin style of playing, but it goes again. And this this thing happens again. Thumb index, thumb index, thumb index. Um, before it was 
in A major, but now it's in E major. And then the bass goes up and melody goes. And that actually is foreshadowing the uh, the stuff that happens in the piccolo section. It's essentially, again, two melodies happening at once. So... And that's a really moving part, because when you play it fast, you... I guess... you know where it goes, so it's like... Mm. It all leads to this E major shape. diminished. Uh, they're also one of the easiest places in the whole arrangement. I know my, my guitar probably went out of tune, but never mind. It's too hard to control in a live environment. So and then it repeats. Don't forget about the switch here. And see, my hand is already ready for the next part. So the, the switch happens probably on this. this A bass here. Then again one of the hardest part of the song because th this part here can take you a, a little while, a really long time to capture because it's a, it's a it's a very weird kind of melody because it goes like first of all it's not very handy to play but it goes from this C sharp seventh position the melody goes first on the fifth fret here and bass moves as well on the sixth string. Then it goes back. Then the melody goes from this second fret to the third fret. While keeping moving the bass. And then the melody goes to the third, first fret, which is this huge stretch again very huge stretch. It's actually from the fourth fret to the first fret. And so that can really take a lot of time to master. In context it sounds like... Mm, and so on. That's that's really a place that really challenging to play. No, I can't even give any sort of tips how to play it. It's just sim it's just playing the melody. And one one tip is that I actually I'm actually muting a lot of strings here by sometimes. 
releasing my fingers in the left hand. So if I'm don't if I'm not blocking anything, it sounds it sounds, it sounds strange. So just to save some energy in the left hand, I'm actually lifting my fingers sometimes. And also in order to sound, for this melody to sound a little bit more interesting. <laughs> it also has this bass move. Then it goes here to this G sharp here. To F sharp minor. Then it's pretty straightforward again. The tricky bit here is, again, you can play it either with the thumb or on the top or like in the full, full bar thing. This part here is pretty tricky because that's some, it's an unusual voicing. So it's an open B, B string, second fret and the third fret. I, actually, since it, it repeats here from just a simple single note melody, I'll play it the whole thing now again, the whole this A major part, which is dash called, it went through Switch. faster it will sound. Is, a, is the name of the game in this arrangement. So, but then goes this great um, octaves part, which again is cleverly engineered piece of work. So, it's it's your it's your octaves, and the challenge here is to to make only the octave sounding, so that's in the sense that I'm actually blocking all the strings except for the octaves. So I fret the fifth string on the bass here, then I mute the fifth string with the tip of my index finger. When I play the octave here with the little finger, and then I actually block. Uh, anything, everything else with this part of my index finger. 
and that's that's the that's the position here. It, it actually enables me to play this ridiculous for the whole part because that's a, in a, in this part of the song is this energetic an energetic part and in the original you can hear that this is call and response thing which I actually play while holding this bass here and so I play the octave here um, that is terribly out of tune or it's just a guitar, but anyway. So it looks like this, I'm actually playing. I'm playing the top top note of the this part of the index finger. So again, but here I am not fretting the top part, it's like floating, only muting the three top strings and here I'm actually I'm, I'm actually not playing the bass note here on the first fret I'm playing only this one and bass I just move here Because the bass is so energetic here anyway, don't need to play it, it plays itself, octave, and between these octaves I'm actually lifting my hand a little bit to mute anything, uh, to mute everything, mute, mute, and I play the same thing here. The, the low octave, I, the low note, I just slide and for the top notes I play every note to this B minor, but it's only a triad on the screen it would be here C sharp major then basically the same thing repeats on the, the starting on this octave and it's pretty handy since it's C sharp and the next octave is C sharp octave so this shape here I keep and I play same uh, same idea same idea as before and actually same musical idea as well because it gets repeated only in D minor this time going to E major so and now my favorite part of the arrangement because these these four notes are probably the hardest place in the song because that's a ridiculous thing what happens here is fingers play something that, that you don't want to play it sounds like this it's this E7 shape like this but only the, these three notes and open B string so what happens is it, the first note is played by the thumb second note is played by the index finger which is pretty normal but then it jumps 
to the second string with the middle finger, which is already kind of unusual because it skips, skips the third string here. But then the third string is get, get, play, get played with the index finger, so it's, it's kind of reversed. And the next beat here is 6th fret, 6th fret with index finger, bass in the 4th string and middle finger. So the whole thing sounds like this. Which is pretty ridiculous to learn because you, you, your fingers are doing that they don't want to do but once you get it to speed it sounds so enjoyable to play this again it's one of the most enjoyable places in the whole arrangement to me and in, in speed it sounds like this <laughs> it goes to this D minus six shape. To the E7. This is pretty typical. And a bunch of octaves again, starting with the the that's another type of octaves which plays with the ring finger and index fingers. Keep attention where it goes, so it starts on the 6th fret here and 4th fret here and goes down up until this B and open, open B. And then, because I'm holding the second finger here, I can actually continue playing octaves, but here. I can continue playing it here with index finger and fourth finger. And you can actually see it there, so. And continue with open. A and open G and G in the bass. Mm. Then this idea here, it's like this. But way easier to play because it all this is four four notes in a row. Then this E minus six shape. bunch of octaves again but this time starting two frets higher so on this eighth fret and notice how it jumps from from G from B straight to A 
to this. Just again, pretty straightforward. Not this level of hardness, but pretty approachable. So, thumb, index, middle, 10th fret with little finger. sets me to this D minor 6 shape so so I am sort of anchoring my hand here just to to play this and again at full speed it sounds like because I am able to play this bass here then and hold my hand on the 10th fret here and fret all the rest. Going to this E major melody. And repeat repeats two times on the third time it's actually going to ninth fret so it was like this and now ninth fret boom, 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 boom. here it's this ninth fret and going to very extremely great this thing going down so all of this is again bunch of octaves so starting on this 9th fret and 7th fret octaves but also going through adding this open B it's an amazing little detail here Going all the way down to the third fret. And going to one of the most, I guess, famous, famous parts of the arrangement, which is the piccolo part, but it's actually easier to play than people think because it's it's again it's a very approachable part. And People assume that playing two melodies at the same time is hard, but actually playing two melodies at the same time is not hard. And it's the same thing with playing and singing at the same time, because so essentially it's what it is. It's playing and singing at the same time. And so if you look at the tablature, actually, you can see that it's everything to it. So if I play it slowly, it will be something like... So as you can see the idea here is that some notes of the second voice which is happen to correlate perfectly with some of the me uh, melody notes and it be becomes something like here I play it at the same time then I play here I'm playing a melody at the same time with the um, with the second voice and I continue with the melody and at speed it sounds like sounds like two melodies at once but I'm actually not thinking about two melodies I'm thinking about one sort of arrangement and 
same same thing actually happens when you learn to play and sing something. For instance, the song like Money for Nothing, which goes like Make me get a blister, make me get a blister. So make me get a blister, me get a So this part falls on get make me get a blister. So this part falls on little little finger. And so on. So the idea here is that no matter how skilled you are, no matter how long you're playing on the guitar, 40 years, 50 years, doesn't matter. When you're playing and learning or singing over something or singing something over the heart pattern on, or something, you got to learn it literally at the lowest humanly possible speed. So it would like this. then it starts to make sense. And actually in Tablature it has a little clue to what's happening. You see this, it says let ring and what it means is that this melody note, you don't play like so you actually let let ring this melody and it becomes something like so holding the melody notes as much as possible basically It's a little bit tricky to play because it's a stretch because the second voice is on the first string played by little finger a lot so it's so that's the hard part about it I, I guess But the, this idea of playing two melodies at the same time is not that hard to grasp, so it continues with... You see, the, it, it all makes sense only at the full tempo, as long as you slow it down, it starts to make no sense at all. It, it, it doesn't make sense at all. And this part here... And again, talking about, you hold this B melody note as long as possible and everything else you play around trying to play while holding the melody and it becomes something like again this hard pull off and hammer on thing and then a huge stretch here part here this, this this again one of the tricky parts because what happens here is the melody then here on this E E 
shape it goes like this through double stops so it's fourth and second string then second and or fifth and the third string then here with little finger and ring finger I'm actually playing this and while holding everything everything else that's pretty hard to, to play especially at speed because it, it, it requires a perfect accuracy and continue with the melody Again, this a little, a little banjo roll. So I play the whole thing slowly and take a look at how it doesn't make any sense at all. Mm. compared it with the full speed version and especially this melody because when I'm actually playing the melody while holding all these notes it, it becomes apparent the melody becomes really it pops and especially if you play with the thumb pick and the melody gets especially loud and the, uh, the second voice is kind of obscured by the melody Then it goes again to this. And what I think I'll do now is I'll play the whole thing slowly if if you happen to want to learn it. Because as I said, it, it's worth learning. And don't be afraid of learning something like this because, again, I'm not a professional and I, I can barely get through this arrangement. But it's so enjoyable to play and just to be able to lear learn all these things and just to learn all these little bits. It's Again, it's, it's, it's the theme of my channel here is that I just learn enjoyable songs and enjoyable arrangements that you don't need to master really but you can just enjoy playing it enjoy learning it and that's the way to think about it and so i'll now 
play it slowly and I actually turn, turn my screencast here. So, follow with tablature if you want to. Even in the, even in this tempo, I make mistakes, but that's that's inevitable. So Apologize to all Americans for butchering this amazing melody, but and the arranger because he's he's still around, Guy Van Duser, and that what a brilliant arrangement I must say. I already told you the story, and that on Berkeley website there is actually a story of how he came up with this arrangement. 
which is basically was intended to be like a, a joke and sort of a joke. And I think, I believe Cherevkins took that idea and went with it brilliantly. And actually, um, with the amazing arrangement he did, uh, tweaking the original a little bit, he actually added the joke element in it. There is in that he ends it abruptly like you feel which it is. And that's that's probably the funniest and the the mo one of the greatest moments I think in Chad Atkins music history, I believe this because from since when I was a kid and I was watching this his version of this tune, I was I laughed so hard. Uh, but I'm not an, I, I'm, I'm not even American, but it, it's it's funny for me. So Chad Atkins made it all. So he made the, he learned this beautiful arrangement his way, added uh, a couple of little ideas that to me sounds more refined and interesting than s from some other players, and also added this comedic element, which is really beautiful and proves again that Chad Atkins is just a, this really amazing guitar player and when he actually plays it he says that he's nervous <laughs> when playing it and he sometimes go through, goes through it but that's why because it's so hard to play I, I, I'm not able to record this in because you as you can see I make too many mistakes but Again, my point here is that it, you don't need to be able to, re record, to record it or to play it perfectly. It's just a fun little arrangement and a great way to spend time and a great way to learn it. So don't be afraid of something like this and just enjoy it. <laughs> this little part It's just a, such a funny thing to play. <clears throat> and so I think I'll end on this. Just enjoy. The tablature is in the description. Learn it anytime you like. And if you want to discuss it with me personally, I can discuss it with you in private lessons as well. Mm -hmm. The link here as well on the screen. And so I'm I'm happy to finally start this teaching thing and enjoying it a whole bunch because so many great people I met in just the span of a couple of months, it's unbelievable. And you can help learn you something like this and but again as I, as I already said I'm not a professional but I don't have to be the professional, why? I'm, I'm a teacher and I'm not a musician. And I tend to think of it as there's two different ways of, of going through things because I don't want to play it live anywhere and I don't want to record it so, but I can play it and I can teach it and that, that's the thing I like, play it for myself and teach it for other people. That's my way. And so, with that in mind, thank you for watching and see you next time. I, I'll go live pretty soon with, with Mark Knopfler tune, pretty soon, so stay tuned.